Hello, welcome to the final show before spring break. I'm Bailey Cabry. The Tolley Equality Alliance Club held their second meeting on March 6th. They had some very special guests visit. Here's Wildcat Watch's Jessica Lane and Aaron Thompson with the story. This is something that we've needed. The Total Equality Alliance, or T, invited speakers from the Equality House, located in Topeka, Kansas. This house is not hard to miss with its display of colors and message it is giving to the community. Equal rights for all. With a message of love and inclusiveness, and it's really just about that. It's about being a symbol of standing up for what's right. This meeting was only the group's second one this semester. Senior Casey Britton, also co-founder of T, wanted Baker to be more inspired. I thought, what better way to let Baker experience that inspiration and that, that sense of like activism than bringing the person who inspires me every single time I spend time with them. Not only were students inspired, but learned that even though Baker is a small community, they accept everyone. Just, you know, sh coming here and seeing like how many people are like support, like just supporters and or who, you know, are um, questioning their sexuality or who have different sexualities or whatever. I mean, I guess it's really cool to come here and see that there's all these different kinds of people in such a small um, college community. Although there were over 50 people that attended the meeting, Hammett believes that there is a majority of people that need to overcome their level of prejudice. That takes a level of being honest, and once you recognize that the prejudice exists, you can start to work to overcome that prejudice. Students have the opportunity to learn more about T and the Equality House by attending their meetings or visiting the Equality House in Topeka, Kansas. Reporting for the Wildcat Watch, I'm Jessica Lane. The last lecture is an event where a professor is chosen to present a last lecture. This gives the speaker a chance to share reflections from their life as it really was their last lecture. All of this is hypothetical, of course. None of the professors involved previously at Baker have ever left right after the speech. You can watch the last lecture Wednesday, March 25th in Rice Auditorium. Watch the live stream through the link on Baker's website. With the weather warming up this week, Abby Rorta took the Baker Beat to the students to find out what some of their favorite activities are. I'm on campus today asking students how they plan to spend their free time as we move into this new season. One of the things that I've already done is go on walks with like my sorority sisters. Like we'll just take off and go on walks. We'll just like lay out and do our homework in the yard or like on our roof. Well, first, I want to play football. Spring ball is coming up. It's going to be great. Everybody's coming to the scrimmages. Um, and then I like to play ultimate frisbee with my friends. Um, I like to swim and go tanning. When the weather, well, as the weather has warmed up, um, I, I gather my friends up and we go and play football in the, um, in the field right behind Gessner. I take walks every once in a while, beautiful campus, play with the squirrels and stuff like that. I like to walk and take pictures of the scenery. Baker's pretty beautiful, so I like to do that. I mean, there's really a ton of things to do now that the weather's nice. I mean, like, literally the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Reporting for the Wildcat Watch, I'm Abby Rorta. John Robb has been playing drums for 10 years. His years have finally paid off. He was nominated by Professor Frank Prez for the nation's small college intercollegiate band. John will participate in the concert at Vanderbilt University in Nashville on March 24th through the 28th. On the first day, John will audition for what instrument he will be using for the concert. John says, quote, He is really excited to play with the best musicians from across the U.S. and Canada. Jenna Warman talked with Baker students on what it's like to be a vegetarian. Maintaining a vegetarian lifestyle can be difficult in a college setting. Eating healthy isn't always easy when there are various unhealthy options available in Baldwin, but junior Laura Byam and sophomore Alyssa Hoochin are accepting the challenge. When I go home to eat uh, meals, sometimes my family um, will forget that I'm a practicing vegetarian um, or my dad who loves to eat meat will always cook meat as the main course and so that makes it a little bit difficult. It's difficult just trying to like, I don't know, find stuff to eat. The Alpha Chi sorority has the advantage of having a cook that makes a vegetarian option every day. Um, Tom, our chef, always has meals that he prepares for all the vegetarians as well as um, for people who eat meat. Although vegetarians don't eat meat, they still need to be meticulous about the nutrients they consume on a daily basis. There's a certain number of amino acids that people need to eat every day. And you can get that through eating meat, um, but if you don't eat meat, then you can combine different foods like rice and beans. Maintaining this lifestyle can be a struggle, but overcoming the daily obstacles for these individuals is just part of their routine. The smell of it and like the Kansas barbecue, like who could resist that? So I think that's just the hard part. Reporting for the Wildcat Watch, I'm Jenna Ormond. The Baker University baseball team played the past weekend at home in a triple header. 
Here's Josh Chalker with a wrap-up of the weekend. The Baker University baseball team played Saturday, March 7th against Grace University at Sutter Field. The Wildcats swept the two-game series. Seth Jones threw a complete game and allowed three earned runs in seven innings and struck out seven batters. Travis Johnson also hit his second home run of the season and second home run at Sutter Field. He also had a team high two hits on the day. The Wildcats then played William Woods right after Grace University, where they lost in a nine-inning battle. The Wildcats will play this weekend versus Central Methodist. Reporting for the Wildcat Watch, I'm Josh Chalker. One aspect on the campus that demonstrates the unique creativity of our students rests inside the dorms. With so many decoration possibilities at the fingertips of each resident, some students like to break away from the social norms. With the blank walls of Gessner awaiting Baker students at the beginning of each year, some residents see it as a blank canvas for their creativity to come to life. For some students, their new home is a place for them to express themselves and ultimately create an optimal living space for the semesters that lie ahead. Luke Taylor is one of those students. With the opportunity to build his ideal room image, Taylor makes the most of it and uses things he already has to make his room more visually attractive to him and those who regularly visit. Um, yeah, when we first got here, the walls were pretty bare. Um, I th the big thing that helped was colors. Uh, just the, the whole two beds on the floor and a TV didn't really appeal to both me and my roommate. So the first night we got here, you know, we spent about, I don't even know, countless hours room moving things, not liking it, changing it up. And I think we like it because it's, it's open and you can walk in. It's very inviting. You know, we can have friends in here and stuff. Um, and so Taylor says it's comforting to come back home every night to your preference and live in a room that makes you comfortable day in this helps us get a good night's sleep. and day out. Reporting for Wildcat Watch, I'm Logan Bertel. Well, that's all we got for today. For all of us here at Wildcat Watch, have a great spring break.